Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Mark Curry. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. Thanks for having me, Whitney. And Mark is the co-founder of SMK Capital Management, a boutique investment firm providing diversified investment offerings to its clients with a focus on passive income and growth. Mark has been a real estate investor for over 15 years and has created over 40 real estate partnerships with investors across multiple real estate asset classes and regions. Mark, welcome to the show. Uh, grateful for your time and expertise and being willing to share some of that with us today. Uh, you know, give us a little more about you know who you are, maybe how you got into this business, what your focus is right now, and let's dive into SMK Capital Management and, and some of the types of deals you all are doing. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Whitney. Um, well, I started kind of my career in financial analysis, working for corporate America and a uh, bit of the grind, right? Uh, cubicle back in the day and uh, doing a lot of budgets and planning and a lot of spreadsheets um, and started investing in real estate on the side. This is you know 15 years ago, pre-recession. I uh, didn't love the huge 80,000 employee corporate world and transitioned to a private distribution company. We were distributing trading cards, uh, baseball, Pokemon, kind of all over the country to mass retail, help them expand their operations. So I kind of got a lot of experience in um, logistics and operations and then just kept investing on the side. And we've just evolved over the years uh, after the recession, the distribution company essentially uh, went out of business. They had a lot of product in the Walmart account and Walmart, you know, during 2008 said, get that stuff out of here, replace it with staple items, right? Bread, milk, uh, diapers, and it was pretty quick too. So that business turned upside down. I learned very fast about the lack of diversification and over leveraging. Um, that can immediately impact a business negatively during, you know, unprecedented times. And so I, we, my father and I decided to partner up. We created our investment firm in 2009, 2010, really just to expand on what we were already doing. We had been pooling some family, friends, capital together for a number of years, buying, you know, distressed single family, small multifamily um, foreclosures, REOs, short sales, a lot of auction properties at you know deep discounts. Whitney, back then you could buy right 50, 60, 70 percent off just a few years ago. And uh, just took advantage of that opportunity that the market was giving us. Um, and then we've just kind of been expanding our footprint over the years. Um, today, we focus strictly on commercial, institutional quality investments, primarily in asset classes that we feel are going to be recession resilient. We've been focused on that for a number of years now. And um, we find best in class operating partners that we've oftentimes personally invested with several times. We have a relationship. We build um, investment options for our clients so that we can all participate in some of the best deals out there today. Nice. Uh, you know, everyone's thinking, well, what are those asset classes uh, sure. you know, that you're talking about? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been a bit of, a, a, I guess, an ev evolution over the last 15 years. Um, so we don't invest really in single family or small multifamily anymore. Um, we've, we've actually invested over the years in probably about a dozen different asset classes. But today we pinpoint it down to uh, three and I'd say four as well, but primarily mobile home parks, self-storage facilities, um, apartment communities, typically workforce housing, class B in growth markets that are still affordable. And um, we also have a very unique niche, high cash flow ATM investment. Wow, incredible. Now, that's awesome that you have the experience too, that, you know, across a dozen different asset classes, and now you've narrowed it down to those three plus, uh, you know, the ATM investment as well. Um, you know, 
I think, uh, you know, like you all, you and I were talking before we started recording uh, just about, you know, how you all bring uh, the uh, financial underwriting and operations, you know, together. Uh, and I thought we could just, you know, dive into that and what that means to you, why that's important. Uh, and so what does that mean? And maybe just elaborate on, on that thought. Sure. Yeah. So having kind of both um, tools, I would call, is, has just proven to be helpful. You know, we didn't set ourselves up with this in mind ahead of time, right? It's just been our evolution. So having a finance background, um, a lot of analysis, of course, helps, right? When you're underwriting real estate investments. And then also having operated many assets um, across money markets in the US, um, you get a better understanding of how much hard work it really is to perform and to manage tenants, manage properties, manage contractors, and all the nuances in between, especially if you have a renovation plan um, that has a timeline and debt. And so being able to put both of those together and not just analyzing or not just doing operations um, really helps us, in, in my opinion, just pick some of the best operators and the, the best deals for our investors. For sure. Could you, uh, like, who who are the team members that specialize in those certain areas that have helped you all to have this, this upper hand? So we rely heavily on our operating partners, right? So they are number one um, key to success. And so we've, I guess I'll share a quick story, but uh, when I left corporate America and I wanted to do uh, a lot more real estate investing full time, I started networking my tail off, Whitney. I went to, you know, one or two meetup groups in Southern California for, geez, probably one to two years straight every week or two. Just met some really sophisticated, highly experienced folks that have been doing this for decades and they, you learn from them, right? So my first jump in was just by investing passively with an operating partner and learning how they're operating, how they're performing, how they handle bumps along the way and hurdles in the business plan. And then just doing that time and time again with different operators and different asset classes um, has really helped a lot in kind of fine tuning what we think to be really a sweet spot is what we try and focus on today where we can get great returns with uh, limited risk. Nice. No, I, I appreciate you elaborating on, you know, you, you started going to REI clubs, you started meeting people that are more experienced, and then you started investing passively as well. I think some crucial steps there that uh, people uh, really don't put enough weight on, I think. I mean, your network is so important, uh, but having those people that have already been there and done it, is just, uh, it just pushes you ahead so much further when you can call on them. And then investing passively as well with different operators, I'm sure you learned a lot. Uh, from that, that has helped you to create this business and, and uh, you know, even more at, at a higher level and faster. Um, you know, so now, um, you know, the types of deals you all are doing now, the mobile home park, self-storage, multifamily, um, you know, I'd love to hear just too, like, how have you scaled? What's been some keys to, to scaling your business and, and growing, uh, you know, in those asset classes specifically, or just, you know, and, you know, within the business? Yeah, sure. You know, I think since day one for us, we've really been focused on diversification. I think probably from some of the learning lessons in, in corporate America that I had. Um, and so today uh, we focus on multiple asset classes, the, the main few that I mentioned, uh, multiple locations and operating partners. So we're essentially diversifying across those three main categories. Um, and so uh, essentially what we, we, we basically want to do is to uh, have a nice portfolio that we feel is very well balanced and well rounded. And then the strategy within a lot of those investments, Whitney, as you know very well, is today we focus primarily on stabilized properties that have a 90% or more occupancy usually at uh, acquisition. And if we do nothing at all to the property, it'll start producing cash flow you know, right away, positive in year one net to our investors. So I think we limit some risk by doing that. Um, and we also focus on um, a value add plan. You gotta have a business plan today. We're at a peak market cycle, right? Whether we thought this was gonna be where we are now or not, this is where we are. Asset prices continue to rise, at least in the, in the assets we're focusing on. Cap rates are often and continuing to decline. There's a lot of demand 
it's not it's not a good time to take a lot of risk right there's already margins being squeezed and so having the right people that have been through multiple market cycles that understand um, the sensitivity of deals these days local markets etc uh, really also helps make sure that we are best positioning our capital and then from there again just diversifying it across asset classes and, and people and, and uh, regions so are you all doing a, a like a blind fund model or you know a large fund or or do you have you do a fund per per property we do both just depends on ebb and flow of deals of capital kind of of what we think is best positioned for the market today so we in 2018 we created our recession resistant fund we felt that was a pretty opportune time to combine our asset classes into one investment offering and allow investors to really diversify you know i think for as little our minimum was 50k not that that's little but you could take 50k and spread it across um i think nine deals is what we put it into mobile home self-storage and apartments and some of those deals by themselves had a minimum of 250k so to replicate that fund um, would require at least a minimum of a million dollars for an individual investor. So we felt that was a really good investment vehicle and a product that would allow investors to spread their capital across what we cherry picked deals to feel, felt to be um, kind of the best strategy for the time, right? And it's, today it's still performing quite well. and We're, we're happy with, uh, with what we did there. But we also look at individual deals, Whitney, um, and we'll put those together and, and just have a, you know, one apartment and one address and syndicate that as well. So we do a little bit of both. No, that's nice. It, it does give investors an opportunity to invest in deals that they might not normally get to invest in, right? I mean, uh, you know, they, uh, the pool of investors that uh, can invest 50,000 a time is, is much larger than 250 or more uh, per deal, right? Uh, and so that, that definitely gives other investors uh, that opportunity. Um, so, you know, as far as um, I know, you know, like in some information literature, you know, I have that, that you had provided, you know, talking about like people are more important than property and projections. Um, could you elaborate on that and what that what that means? Gosh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like rule number one for us, Whitney. We've just found over the years that uh, although we're in the real estate business, we're really in the people business. And I, what I mean by that is you could take the best property in the best part of town, but if you have the wrong property manager, operator, asset manager, you can lose money still, right? So uh, you have to align yourselves with the best of the best. And it's not just track record and performance, that's a big part of it, but it's character, it's integrity, it's transparency, um, it's their ability to pivot when something in the business plan goes left and they thought it was gonna go right. How do they respond to changes, right? Because you could take a pro forma, right, projections for an investment um, any day of the week, 20, 30 minutes, you could adjust the returns and you could tweak them up three to 5% just by making a few minor assumptions to the inputs. So you got to be careful looking at rosy projections, number one. And number two, if you're working with people that are overzealous and providing you with rosy projections in the first place, that says something. So we like to focus on folks that are real conservative, that want to outperform projections, and that have operational expertise, you know, way beyond you or I, that can take a potential situation that could disrupt performance and turn it into a, a, a positive. And so people are more important to me than, than property. Lionshare Bookkeeping believes the key to generating wealth is understanding where it comes from and where it needs to go. They provide bookkeeping and financial coaching exclusively to real estate investors, focusing on cash flow, strategy, and action. Go to lionsharebookkeeping.com forward slash apartments to connect with them now. Oh, I love that. Uh, just that thought of people are more important than property or projections. I could not agree more. Yeah, who that person is, uh, whether it's your your the operator or the man property manager or all this, all those people are so important and can just wreck a deal. 
in a hurry. Uh, but man, you know, a good team, uh, you know, you, you said it really well and you said you just have to align yourself with the best of the best uh, and, and you're going to go there together. Uh, you know, uh, you know, working together, no doubt about it. Um, you know, what's what's something, Mark, though, that uh, just knowing what you know now, coming from the uh, from the corporate world, uh, you know, different positions there, and then moving into real estate, growing this business now. Um, you know, what's something now that you that you know now that you wish you had known when you were in the corporate world or moving into real estate? It's harder than you think. <laughs> when I first started, I just, you know, I, my first investment was in 2005, right? I, I bought a, a condo for myself. It was highly outdated. I renovated it personally and with friends after work, go to Home Depot, learn. And the market um, was still at our tail at that point, right? So my valuation two years later skyrocketed. I said, oh man, this is great. I can, you know, it's going to continue forever. And, and I can, pull money out and go buy something else. Um, and that quickly stopped, right? 2008 happened. And so that was a quick learning lesson that isn't, it isn't that simple. And uh, I learned, you know, you don't want to rely on natural market appreciation, especially now, Whitney, right? We're at the peak of a market. So while there might be some, you have to really pull a lot of levers to increase revenue and reduce expenses. And so that takes a lot of work. It's not like you're just buying something and, and sitting on it and watching it grow. It, it doesn't doesn't work that way. So um, I think that's what I've learned is that it's harder than you think. And if you're just going to dip a toe in, do it a little bit here and there, it's going to take a long time. right? And so you better be ready for that. And that's OK if that's your strategy. But just have expectations up front this is a long game. There is no get rich quick here. You need to work your butt off day in and day out. You got to hustle and you got to read a ton and be on top of things in order to succeed. Great advice, no doubt. And I want to, I want to, uh, just a few things on that though, while we're talking about that, um, you know, how, how did you gain that high level of self-discipline? You know, what are, uh, what are some ways that you can help the listener to think through, you know, just creating that self-discipline to, to get there, uh, through that, those hard times like you're talking about? I think some of it's character, Whitney. Um, I'm very ambitious just by nature, I think. Um, I, I'm also disciplined because I really love it. And so I wake up every morning excited to go to work. I, I can say that. I know you, people say that all the time, but I, I never, 15 years ago, that wasn't the case, right? Um, but you have to love it. I think that helps a lot. Uh, and you have to also be um, excited to do what you're going to do. So if it's just another thing that you think you might try here or there, you know, that's okay, but it's probably better to be passive. If you want to start a syndication business, um, you, you got to put all of it, all of your skin and, and everything you got effort into it to be successful today. There's a lot of competition. And then we're also in a situation where um, there's a lot of risk because of where we are in the market cycle. So I think um, hard work and, having that ambition and that that just that love and that drive from day one is is important do you have a, a couple of daily habits that have that you're disciplined about uh, that have helped you achieve success yeah you know I, I, I a lot of people have a morning routine and they do yoga and they do meditate and they you know soak themselves in ice baths i don't, I don't really have anything that specific for me, I, I like to read uh, news every day uh, in our industry about trends, market cycles, what's going on. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, so I do that every day. I also, uh, to stay organized and kind of on track, I, I have post-it notes that I use all the time, Whitney. And at the end of every day, I'll typically set up my next day's schedule. Um, and then I also have some, some running goals that, uh, there you go, <laughs> the running goals that I'm uh, uh, working towards and constantly updating um, as well. Nice. Well, where do you get that news that you're reading every day uh, you know, about the industry? Yeah, I subscribe to um, you know, some national uh, journals um, uh, and some data sources. Green Street Advisors is great. They put out a lot of content and data. Um, Marcus and Miller Chap as well. Um, National Real Estate Investor. Um, is, those are three that, you know, they've got content every couple of days that you can subscribe to and really stay on top of things. 
What's been the hardest part of this syndication journey uh, for you? Good question. I, I think it would probably be um, filtering out all the noise. There is so much out there, Whitney, if you're in this full time, um, like we've been for you know a decade now, a lot has changed and a lot continues to change. Mm -hmm. And so uh, remaining on track, remaining disciplined and trying to really focus on doing one thing very well is, is what I think has been hard. So we've evolved over the years, you know, we're still learning every day. Um, nothing's perfect, not for anybody. And you got to stay on top of it so that you can you know, remain afloat and continue to thrive and provide you know, for us, we want to provide our clients with the best deals. How do you, how do you prepare for another downturn? Yeah, well, we've been kind of doing that now for a few years, Whitney. Um, honestly, by 2017, 2018, we stopped buying more correlated assets correlated to the market. Um, historically, single family is a big one where, market valuations have been tied to the economy, right? Um, that isn't the case today, but I don't know that anyone would have thought that, but we'll see what happens in the near term if there's a flood of potential foreclosures or some of these loans that are being you know, forbearance, if that, that comes back. So we've just positioned ourselves. Um, really, our thesis hasn't changed that much in the last few years, Whitney. We've kind of expected a recession or a correction. Um, and by being a bit defensive with strategy, uh, we've, we've continued to flourish and, you know, focusing on lowly correlated or inversely correlated asset classes and then strategies within those asset classes. Um, and then also geography and of course people. Could you give a, an example of like a correlated asset class uh, or, or uh, you know, a market inside of that asset class or something like you're talking about just to, to help us better understand? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, the stock market is obviously a big um, foundation of that. So if the economy is suffering, businesses are suffering, your, your stock valuations are typically going to go down. That's correlated uh, to the overall economy. And then you have historically single family homes have often been correlated because if you take residential real estate versus commercial real estate, the value of residential real estate, even if it's a rental property, is based on the other rental or the other homes in the market, right? Comps. Uh, it doesn't look into what is the net operating income that that house is producing. Whereas commercial real estate, the valuation is based on the revenue. It's a business. And so the valuation of that business is directly correlated to its performance and how much it's producing. Um, generally speaking, we find that that to be a little bit less correlated. Now within that asset class of commercial real estate, we like to focus on, yeah, you know, let's take mobile home parks, Whitney, right? So they are one of the most affordable housing solutions in the country and they have limited or declining supply okay that's a very unique combination in itself when you're looking at real estate uh, limited and declining supply is really just you can't find that in any other asset class you can always build an apartment or build self storage or maybe land right it would be the one anomaly which is uh hard to produce income from but mobile home parks generally speaking in desirable locations were built in the 60s and 70s. And today, local municipalities, you know, have that nimbyism, not in my backyard, and they just don't really allow or want more of them. And so if you're going to go and try and build or develop a mobile home park, it's very hard to do that. And it's very hard to do that in a desirable location. Right. So that alone makes it pretty lowly correlated to the market where you have flat or reduced supply and it's very affordable. And so the demand typically goes up during tough times. What's your best source for meeting new investors right now? Uh, this, honestly, it's talking to people because um, we've always been a relationship focused business. That's been number one for us. So the first time we went out and raised capital outside of our family and my friends is 
we invited folks over to our house and gave them a business plan and presentation in our basement, right? So, um, and they invested with us, not because we were amazingly true experts in our niche, but because they trusted us. They knew our character and our integrity and they knew we were gonna work our butts off to protect them and their money. And so that relationship is, it's so important with the people, Whitney, it just comes back to that. So most of our, a lot of our investors today um, and investments are referrals from other investors. Um, and that's, that's important to us. So we, uh, we continue to network, continue to meet folks and, and share thoughts. Uh, no, that's community. awesome. And it speaks volumes too. When you start getting those referrals, it's probably one of our best sources now, uh, you know, is, re you know, referrals, uh, it doesn't happen overnight though. Uh, but, uh, right. that's, that's awesome. Uh, what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I think it's drive. Honestly, just the love and continued persistence to uh, push, push, push and learn, learn, learn and never stop um, listening. You got to listen a ton in this industry because there's so much going on and uh, and really just working hard. How do you like to give back? Um, you know, pre-COVID, I was teaching a course at our local community college, real estate investing principles and best practices. Uh, it's just for fun. But uh it was a great course. It was a uh, four week intensive course um, where folks would you know, come in person and learn a little bit the old fashioned way, right? In a, in a classroom setting. And uh, I love teaching it. It, it, it. To this day, I still have some students reaching out to me, asking questions, saying thank you. And it, you know, it's, it's great to see that uh, transfer of some knowledge to uh, to folks is is something that they keep and retain for years. Um, right now, it's hard to do that because of COVID, but uh, I'm hoping to get back into it once it's safer. Nice. Well, Mark, I'm grateful for your time, and it's uh, great to hear your story. Just coming out of the corporate world, and then you know, moving into you know, just really building a successful real estate business. And congratulations on that. Uh, but just you know, how you elaborated on having the financial and operational expertise. You know, just how that's benefited you all. Um, and then uh, just talking about even reading the news every day and, and what you're focused on there. Uh, but many parts of uh, just of what you talk about, different asset classes, down to those three core ones that you're focused on now, uh, and what you expect just in our, our market cycle right now. So grateful for your time, Mark. Tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Whitney. It's been fun. Um, you can check us out online. Our website is uh, smkcap.com. And uh, feel free to reach out. My email or email is info at smkcap.com. There's a lot of information on our website, um, trends, knowledge, resources, videos, and uh, yeah, happy to help folks uh, uh, in their journey. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.